This video was brought to you by the TLDR socials. Get more from TLDR by following us on Instagram and Twitter, where we post breaking news and explainers that never make it to YouTube. The link is down below. You might have seen that payment providers are cracking down on content online, effectively giving them control over what's bought and sold on the internet. So today, we're going to be taking a look at MasterCard's latest rules regarding adult content, what they'll mean for sex workers, and whether private payment processing companies really ought to be responsible for regulating the internet. So we're going to split this video into three parts. Firstly, we're going to explain the new rules and how they might affect porn online. Secondly, we're going to be looking at why the new rules have come under some criticism, especially from adult content creators. And thirdly, we're going to take a look at some possible solutions and suggest that maybe governments should be doing more. So let's start with the new rules. Starting from Friday the 15th of October, sites that host adult content have had to comply with a whole load of new rules if they want to use MasterCard to process their payments. Adult sites will need to 1. Enter into a written contract with any content creator 2. Require proof of age and identity of anyone involved in the contract 3. Review all content before publication, although this can be via an automated process 4. Have an effective complaints process for reporting any content that's either illegal or violates any of the other rules and finally, offer the ability for any person depicted in the content to get it taken down. Mastercard have also suggested, but not confirmed, that they're considering a ban on deepfakes, which are basically videos that have been digitally altered so that they appear to be someone else. In practice, this basically means two things for content creators. Firstly, they'll need to do a fair bit more paperwork before uploading content to prove that they're both who they say they are and that they're old enough. And secondly, they'll face some delay when uploading content because it will have to be reviewed before publication. According to MasterCard, these rules have been introduced to ensure that only lawful activity takes place on their network. Although these new rules are likely also a response to the growing public pressure on processing payment companies to play a more active role in limiting illegal activity on their networks. For instance, 34 women are currently suing Visa, along with the owners of Pornhub, for hosting unconsenting footage of them. And in 2019, Some of Us, a left-wing pressure group, tabled a proposal at MasterCard's annual meeting to stop payments to far-right groups. While the proposal was ultimately defeated, its proposal is a symptom of the fact that the public has started to expect private payment processing companies to do their bit to tackle the more distasteful aspects of the online porn industry. Nonetheless, while these rules might look sensible at first glance, they have come under some criticism. There are perhaps three main criticisms. They're bad for sex workers, they're not clear, and they're not democratic. Let's start with the first and perhaps most significant criticism, that the new rules actually hurt sex workers. Some sex workers and sex worker unions have argued that the new rules will make it harder for sex workers to make a living, because it'll be more difficult, more time consuming, and more costly for sex workers to produce adult content. Reacting to this, in September, nearly 1,500 sex workers, sex educators, and other stakeholders signed a letter demanding that MasterCard halt the policy change and consider the evidence that new regulations would actually harm sex workers. And in October, the ACLU declared that MasterCard's new rules would violate sex worker rights. Their concern seems to be that the new rules will make it harder for adult content creators to produce content online, and that this will, in turn, force them into either unregulated corners of the internet or into physical sex work, which is obviously a fair bit more dangerous. The second criticism is that the new rules just aren't clear. This is pretty uncontrovertible. The new rules haven't been published in full anywhere. MasterCard's terms of service haven't been updated since February, and the only publicly available information from MasterCard is a vaguely worded blog post. This was also apparent during the OnlyFans debacle, when OnlyFans banned explicit content and people assumed it was because of MasterCard's new rules. According to OnlyFans, it actually had to do with the banks themselves, not MasterCard, but no one was really sure, highlighting how opaque some of these processes can be. The final criticism is that it just isn't democratic. This is something we touched on in our video about OnlyFans' decision to ban explicit content. 
But for those of you who didn't watch that video, the basic idea is that every company relies on payment processors. And because the payment processing business is effectively a duopoly between Visa and MasterCard, it means that private companies with no democratic accountability get to decide which companies exist. So those are the three main criticisms. But on to the last bit of this video, some possible solutions. There are basically three possible solutions to this issue. Crypto, composition and government policy. The most obvious solution is switching to cryptocurrency, because crypto transactions don't require a third party payment processor. Unfortunately though, this isn't a perfect solution, primarily because they're still subject to serious price fluctuations. This is fine if you're able to ride out the volatility, but it's not great if you're already struggling for money, as many sex workers are. Which leads perfectly onto the second solution, which would be some sort of competition. If there were adequate competition, then adult sites could just use a different payment processor to get around this issue. Unfortunately, as we mentioned earlier, the payment processing business is basically a duopoly between MasterCard and Visa, who process 30 and 60% of payments outside of China respectively. Regardless, you might be thinking, why don't these adult sites just switch to Visa? But this isn't really an option, because historically, Visa and MasterCard have basically trod the same lines. In 2012, Visa and MasterCard simultaneously started blocking medical marijuana purchases, before both relaxed their rules in 2014. But then, in 2020, Visa and MasterCard decided to block Pornhub on the same day. The point is, like any cartel, Visa and MasterCard basically mirror each other, which means that switching to Visa isn't really a long-term option. So what about other, smaller payment processes? Well, there's basically two reasons they're not available network effects and government regulation. Network effects basically describe how the value of a product changes when more people adopt it. For example, as more vendors accept MasterCard, more buyers are likely to use MasterCard, which means that more vendors will accept MasterCard, and so on and so forth. Thanks to network effects, a payment processing company is more useful the more people that use it which means that big payment processing companies have a huge advantage over smaller ones who have to charge more for their services. Secondly, governments seem to actively discourage new payment processes. Operation Chokepoint, launched by Obama in 2013, put pressure on banks and payment processors to stop trading with legal but apparently distasteful businesses, which just reinforced the lack of choice because it meant that all payment processors were basically avoiding the same businesses. Essentially then, small payment processing companies are treated with suspicion, which means that it's harder for them to offer an alternative to the current duopoly. This leads us to our last solution, government policy. Mastercard's new rules are easy to criticise, but they've got a point. Admittedly, the modern porn industry has its good bits. It provides a safe living to otherwise vulnerable sex workers for starters, but it also has really horrible parts deepfakes, revenge porn, and human trafficking to name a few. These really horrible bits demand regulation, but effective regulation of porn, regulation that keeps the good bits while limiting the bad ones, is a gargantuan moral and technical challenge. Think about it. Effective regulation needs to both accurately reflect our moral intuitions about porn, which are diverse and complicated as it is, and be effective in an online universe that's famously difficult to regulate. In a sense, it's completely unsurprising then that MasterCard's policy isn't perfect. It's a private, profit-maximizing payment processor after all, not a think tank. Really, instead of MasterCard, the government should be the ones sorting this out. But so far, they haven't, because it's politically difficult. Instead, they've left it up to private companies to police the internet, and then feigned surprise when the profit-maximizing companies don't act in the interests of society. Essentially, part of the reason that MasterCard have had to implement this policy is because of inactivity on the part of politicians. And if we want a better porn policy than a 400 word blog post from MasterCard, we should be demanding it from our politicians. Anyway, what do you think? Are we being too easy on MasterCard? Should governments leave the internet be, even if that means an unregulated porn industry? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more TLDR content. You can follow just the TLDR UK socials or go wild and follow whichever TLDR accounts interest you. Anyway, following and sharing our posts not only gets you more from us, but also helps us out. So thanks a lot. 
And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.